Okay, this is test three. And the first one, I just wrote a program and added it back as GCF. Uh, you just do the program GCF and type in the numbers and the answer is B6. Number two is backed by popular demand. You times the coefficients and add the exponents. Uh, so the answer is J, 12N to the 12. Uh, this one tells a mathematical story. Uh, the original price is 88. So you time one fourth off means you times it by one fourth and get 22. That's $22 off the price. So it's 88 minus 22 is 66. That's the first part of the story, the one fourth off. Then you have to pay a sales tax. So you times it by 7% and that's the tax. So it's 66 times 0 0.07. Let's see if I can get the calculator back. Ooh, boy. Sorry. For the delay. So it's sixty six times point zero seven, and that's the tax which you pay on top of the $66, so it's 7062. So that's how much you're paying for the shoes. Now you get, the last part of the story is you give them four $20 bills. So what's the change? Four $20 bills is 80 minus, and this is your change, eight O minus the answer and you get 938 back mathematical story telling it for you all right next is we have to raise a hundred and forty dollars and we're going to sell brownies at a buck and we sell 82 so how much does that leave 140 minus 82 is 58 and then brownies are 50 cents each two brownies is a dollar so you can just times this by two or divide by a half because you need to raise 58 dollars in the cookies so 58 divided by a half or 58 times two should give you j 116. Uh, angles are vertical. We discovered that the other day, so that's 38. And then isosceles triangle theorem, AB is congruent to BC. That makes the angles opposite them equal. So how big is B? You add up the two angles, 76, and you go 180 minus is D. All right, they say how many is less than the average? So what you want to do there is average the four numbers, 81 plus 84, right? Plus 62 plus 94. Average, you add them up and divide by four. So the average time is 80.25. So the question was how many people are less and it's just a shade of only G, one person. Okay, um, this is simple. 18,000 visitors entered in what we would call an hour and 20 minutes 
and we're looking for how many minutes that is. So it's 18,000 divided by 80, 225 per minute. Answer D. This one comes out of nowhere. When you add the vectors, you add the components. So the X's are added to get four and the Y's are added to get 11. Answer, 411H. That came out of nowhere. I hadn't seen that one. Five gallons of paint. Wow, we saw this the other day, the exact problem. And you minus how much they used. So it's five, five, minus a half minus alpha y equals two, one, and three fourths. Bet they want the answer as a mixed, so alpha y equals three, and the answer is two and three fourths b. This one's simple, but it really confuses people. I am a big fan of the plug-in. That goes in the place of the X is four. R goes in the place of the Y. So what is R equal? It equals that. Negative 10 is G. Don't be afraid to just take that point and plug it in. All right, this is revisited already in our class. What gives it away? It's a linear function. When 8 is entered, I get 6. When 12 is entered, I get 9. Program slope. When 12 is entered, I get 6. And I forgot what the other one was, or did I do it wrong? 8 was 6. 12 was 9. Sorry. Whenever I make a mistake on the program, I just end it. Uh, I forgot them again. 8, 6, and 12, 9. 8, 6. 12, 9, and the answer is y is 3 fourths x plus 0. 3 fourths x plus 0 is choice A. Two straight stows. Uh, 12 is negative 5 stow x. We type in negative 4x squared, answer negative 100. G. And then we got to change x to negative 1 and go negative 1 sto x. And then we type in the function 4x cubed minus 2x squared. Lovely, huh? And I get negative 6 for my answer, which is B. So we rolling. Hey, we've seen this before. Cut it up. Rectangle on the left is 9 by 10. Now the one on the right is, this is 11 and this is 9, so this missing part's got to be 2 by 4, 8. Add them up, answer 98. This one talks about a scatter plot, and the basically they all, they all have a line of best fit. And the line of best fit like, looks like that. Well, that line has as its slope, 
on this upward line reaches up, a negative slope line reaches down, and its y-intercept looks to be about plus 4, which is positive. So which one is this? The slope is negative, the y-intercept is positive. This is solve and plug in. You certainly could use equation solver if you wish for a basic linear equation i don't and then if you did use solver you don't even have to stow because negative three is stowed as your x and now i get to show off my abs get it <laughs> five minus x squared inside the ab math number 5 minus x squared, okay? And the answer is 4. G. Reading graphs. All they're asking is, what is the maximum value? That's the high point. Reaches it a bunch of times. The high point is 3. The answer is B. This is a famous repeat. Okay, I'm taking a group of numbers and I'm replacing the score on the last one is a 10, not a 9. Is that going to affect the average? Yes, because the total goes up. Is it going to affect the median? No. Because the median is still the middlest of the scores. Now, it might affect the mode, which is the most appearing score, but I've got the mode as being 7 and staying 7. So the answer is F. It's only number 1. Here's a theme they don't do much anymore. The equation y is 2 thirds x plus 4 has a slope of 2 thirds. Well, to be parallel to it, you're not going to be coming across. You're going to be staying on the tracks. So you also have to have a slope of 2 thirds. So who has a slope of 2 thirds? This guy. These others have slopes that are not two-thirds. By the way, might as well cover perpendicular. Perpendicular would have a negative reciprocal slope, and perpendicular would be negative three-halves. So actually, that would be a couple of these, and therefore it wouldn't have been a valid question. Chief Sokata! The tangent of B is the opposite side over the adjacent. Adjacent means next to and not the hypotenuse. So that's the adjacent. Uh, this guy is the hypotenuse in the figure. So the tangent ratio is 1 over radical 2. Get that straight. This is a revisited i seen it years ago. It's called the contrapositive. If I live in Chicago, then I live in Illinois. If I don't live in Illinois, then I can't live in Chicago. Why not? Because if I lived in Chicago, I would live in Illinois. If I live in New Orleans, then I live in Louisiana. If I don't live in Louisiana, I sure as heck don't live in New Orleans. This is a reverse negate. You reverse them and negate them. It's called the contrapositive, and that's the answer every time. Uh, where are we? 22. Uh, 3 feet 8 inches. I converted to inches. That's 44. How did I get that? 3 feet is 36, and they cut the board in half. So it's going to be 22 inches, uh, which is going to be 
uh, 12 inches and a foot, so it's one foot and 10 inches to make 22. A lot of ways you could do that on your calculator too. I'll go over if you ask. Uh, careful, watch out, these are inches, these are feet. Which way do you wanna go? Uh, I like going to the smaller one, so I'm not using fractions. That kinda doesn't matter, uh, but six feet, would be 72 inches and 15 feet would be 180 and of course the squares are nine by nine so how many of these fit in here it's division of areas it's 180 times 72 divided by nine times nine the whole thing divided by each square. So I'm gonna need 160 of those things to make this work, okay? It's the big area over the little area. Uh, they'll do that with volume two, uh, where they do the volume uh, and divide. Uh, 24, this is tricky. Do you recognize this circle equation? The center is two zero and the radius is one. So this is one. Now here's the sneaky part. This is the radius from the center out. Well, this is two out right here. So what is the angle measure? You use Chief Sokotoa. I want opposite over hypotenuse. I want the sine. So the sine of the angle I'm looking for is one over two. And those of you familiar with trig know that you use second sine when you're finding the angle. So second sine one over two is 30 degrees each. One side of a square is x, so its area is x squared. One is x minus two, so the area is foiled. So what's the sum of the areas? You just add these together and get e. Not too bad, huh? Did I skip one? I skipped 26, didn't I? Yeah, this one, you, you want to solve for y, but I really think you want to times everybody by 4 first to get rid of the fractions. So 4 times 5 is 20, divided by 2 is 10x. The 4s cancel, 3y is negative 2. Now you're solving for y by moving the 10x over and dividing everybody by three. And there's your equation. And the slope is sitting next to the X. Y is MX plus B. These are a pain. You've got a jacket that starting price of 625. So uh, 625 means it's in here so the listing fee is 50 cents the selling price was 3420 so you need to know what five percent of that is that's 0 0.05 171 so the selling fee was 171 and then you just add those together and you get 221. Listing fees are 575, uh, that's this total. And he uh, sold a number of, of articles from the $5 to 19 so it's 50 cents each. So
So how many of that are there? It's 575. divided by 0.5, and that's 11.5. Now, it doesn't round up. It actually rounds down because I can't, uh, the 12th one rounding up would have pushed me to $6 to the next one, okay? This one uh, tells you an obvious simul equation, but you actually have to do more than that. Let me show you. So let's get the simuls out of the way. The uh, 1, 1, uh, 1, 16 are the two items. And then 0 0.03, 0 0.05, and 4, 34 are the fees. So one item sold for 73 and the other one for 43. So what was the total listing fee for the two items? Well, the 73 is $2 and the 43 would be $1. So it should be two plus one, three dollars. So you get the two answers and then look back up at the fees. Here's a good one for our program, volume of cylinder. They give it to you anyway. The volume is uh, 36 pi times five. So I don't have that program on my thing. And water weighs 2,000 2, uh, per cubic meter. So there's your calculation right there. Uh, it's 36 times 5 times pi. The program would have given you that. And then you times it by 2205 for the weight. Water's heavy, huh? One, two, four, it's a million two hundred thousand. Heavy stuff, huh? So it's over a million two hundred thousand. The answer is J. All right, this is a classic. It's a classic Simold. Four dollars per child, six dollars per adult. And I made ninety dollars. Children plus adults is the 21 people. A classic, classic, classic simul. 4690. And what was the other one? 1121. Be careful, we may not have the answer when we're done. 18 and 3. So what does that mean? There were 18 children and 3 adults. What is the ratio of children to adults? So it's 18 to 3, which is 6 to 1 when reduced. Okay. This one, you can either do it outside in or inside out. I'll do it inside out. 2 over 8 is 1 fourth. X to the third, uh, the 2 comes up and makes 5. The 5 goes down and makes 11. And the Z stays up and makes 5. I do negative exponents by flipping them upside down. Flipping them upside down is what I have to do now. So 1 doesn't care. 4 squared is 16. Flip it. X to the 10th. Flip it. Z to the 10th. Flip it. Y to the 22. Flip that. 
So there's your answer. It's uh, the answer's K. Yep. Double plug in. Plug negative one into G. I'm going to go negative 1 sto x, and then I'm going to go x squared minus 1. Oh, no, that's 0. Now, what do I do with 0? I take the answer 0 and plug it into f, 2x plus 3. If you're used to this, you'll stow it again, and then type 2x plus 3. But if you get the concept, the math is not hard. The answer is three uh, feet. Tough one. I have three spots to put seven plants. So how many plants can go in the first spot? Seven. And it's reduction counting because I can't put the same plant next. I'm down to six, then five. It's a factorial concept. Um, it, if those of you have studied it, it's seven pick three, uh, which you can do on the calculator uh, more for another day, all right? Area of A, B, C, D, it's a trapezoid. Yay, we finally get to use that, I think. Area of a trapezoid, hit your bases 20 and 28, and you should get 168 for your answer. This one's tough. It's the volume, and here's the, the base is this triangle, because the same... Uh, base is the floor. Floor is the ceiling is what I say in geometry class. So you do area of the triangle is the, the formula is area of the base times the height. When you draw that script B, you mean the area of the base. So the area of the triangle is what? And then you times it by 10. So the answer should be 90 H. That's a tricky one. They usually don't do that formula, area of base times height. This one tricked me a little bit. Whenever you're doing a shaded region like this, the shaded region is the entire thing minus the inside. So it's AB, the big rectangle, minus the little rectangle. Where they scared me was the area is what fraction of the whole? So it's AB minus CD over the whole rectangle, uh, which is A. Now, this always confuses. Uh, we're looking at a six-digit code, and we did this with the license plates the other day. However, if the first letter has to be A, that's just one choice. If H has to go second, that's just one choice. So the answer is simply what? One times one times the four possible numbers. Again, the numbers can repeat. So it's F, one times one, times 10, times 10, times 10, okay? This would be if there were two possible choices for the first one, for the first letter, but they said one, okay? This one is average is total. So the average of a five-day period is four degrees. Multiply them, huh? It was later determined that the average is higher because one of the days was actually two digits higher. So the total isn't 20, it's 22 divided by five. So it's really a 22 total. So the average is really 4.4, .4, which is 
which is how much more than the original average, 0.4. 40 is not too bad. I, whenever I see this, I make discs. So a blue disc, a blue disc, and a red disc, and a blue triangle, a red triangle, and a yellow triangle. So what's the probability that the axis is blue? So who's blue? You are, you are, you are, because you've got the B by it. Or a triangle. So how many people did I check? Five out of six. Answer, okay. This one made me work harder than I wanted to because the scores encapsulate each group. So the 41 to 50 group is two, but the 51 to 60 is not five, it's five minus two, three. And the 61 to 70 isn't 10, it's 10 minus five. And the 71 to 80 isn't 18, it's 18 minus 10. You see, I keep tacking on. So the 81 to 90 group is not 24. It's 24 minus 18 or 6. Huh? Six more. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. And then the 91 to 100 is 30 minus 24, 6. So how many had a score of 70 or greater? That's these guys. So 20, J. It took me a while to set up. But I'm the median must be where the 15th score is. So it has to be, uh, this is 2, 5, 10. 18. So it has to be between 71 and 80. You got me? And this one's just for the 41 to 50 range, too. And there were three less than four times the number. So it's four times two minus three, which is five. Once I set that up, I made mincemeat out of that problem. Okay. 45, I just plug in numbers. Is it true for 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10? Yes. But once you get to 0, 0 minus 1 is, is a positive one. It stops being true. So it's only true for numbers greater than 1. It stops being true after that. Uh, my students in my trig class will get this one. You can only do the law of signs if you have a ratio. So I'll look at that and know right away that the answer is F. Because if I know this side is something, and I know this angle and that angle, I could go sine of A is to A as sine of B is to B. So that would allow me, because I know this one, and I know the side length A, that would allow me to proceed with the law of sines. It's going to be tough to get that if you hadn't studied the law of sines. And to be honest, it still is. Ellipse equation, uh, a circle equation is that and the x squared y squared r squared an elliptical equation puts the radii under the number so this is five so the x number is 25. this is three so the y number is nine three squared so it puts the radiuses under the the square now what do you do to get it to match this you multiply by the LCD of 25 and 9, which is 225. And that's how you get 9x squared 
plus 25 y squared is 225. Okay. You could have chucked them in and seen if they fit. Like if you just plug in 5, 0, you could go, well, if x is 5, that doesn't work. If x is 5, that doesn't work. And then this one, I don't know if it would work for that one. Uh, it certainly wouldn't work here. So without even doing much math, I know I'd be down to C and D. Uh, I would need to do it on the calculator and I don't want to waste the video time. This is a familiar one, huh? Given that negative two is a solution, which of the following is a factor? Well, if negative two is a solution, x plus two has to be a factor because we answer opposite. So the other factor, I just divide two into negative six, and I know it's got to be x minus three. You could check that by foiling and seeing if indeed those are the factors and solutions tricky little problem there. This one tricked me too. They're looking for uh, it's 10 by 10 and this is 5 by 5. So use your area of a triangle. It will give you for that 12 and a half. Well the whole square is 100. So what's not shaded is 100 minus the 12 and a half. So that's what they want. They want the ratio of the area of the triangle to the pentagon, which is all this unshaded stuff, which is uh, 12 to uh, 12, uh, oh, uh, 100 minus 12.5 is 87.5 and now you just do that ratio 12.5 over 87.5 matha fracca to reduce it to one seventh okay whenever they ask for a ratio of you just put the answer for one over the answer for the other this one made me pause and again, I don't want to, I, I definitely don't want to give the impression that any of these are easy problems or not. But this one, I was like, what are they doing? So I just started plugging in answers. Is it two? So from negative two to two, I went, all right, all the absolute values added together would only give me six. So three works. If you go negative three, negative two, negative one. 0, 1, 2, 3. The absolute values there add up to 12. So that's more of a reading problem than a math one. That way. All right, we're at the dreaded last 10, which can be easy or hard. Uh, F of G of X means copy G. And then put G into X. So I plug that into F, and now they want the domain. Well, the domain's only going to exist when the square root is positive. So x minus 3, what's inside, has to be greater than or equal to 0. So we need x's that are bigger than 3. This one tells a story. And the story has you going all this detour. Now, what I did was I counted the detour, and I went four north, one west, two north, so that's a total of six, three, eight, six miles straight west, so that's seven west. And then uh, I start turning back. 
three south. One east. And that made somehow that got me six miles away from the starting point. Whatever I went, I'm oh, I forgot the second three south, that's why. Because I end up going six north and six south, and you end up going seven east and only one west. So you end up six away. But that's not the answer. It's how many miles extra you drew. So what you do is you add all those up and subtract it from six. So I think it's a 20 mile detour and you would have only drawn six. So the answer is 14. Hey, I just do this answer and then see what kind of number it is. 3D is negative four. So D is a Rational, rational is a fraction. It's not irrational, it's not positive, and it's not an integer. So it's one and four only. It's a rational, uh, not an integer, it's a negative rational number. Almost done. Hey, this is a great place for a stove. You tell me that, I'm going to go negative one half. So X, and I'll let you do the rest. Negative one half so X, and then I type in all the values. The biggest is negative one over X, which gives you two. I'll let you type in the rest. The answer is K. This one always bothers me because I can't figure out which one they're doing. It's the change between 8 and 12. So the angle of the awning right here, sine of theta is 2 over 6. So it's second sine 2 over 6. And this angle, the sine of theta is a 3 over 6. So it's second sine 3 over 6, and the difference of the angles is the subtraction of what? The change from 12 to 8, from 8 to 12, is the answer for 12 minus the answer uh, for 8. So it's the second one minus the first one. Hey, hey, hey. I don't know how your calculator is programmed, but I think sometimes you need parentheses for this. And I'm going to find out now how mine is. It's 2 minus I. I don't think this works for everybody in the fraction. So 2 minus I over negative 3 plus I, second decimal is I. Yeah, I thought so. So what you got to do, I'm glad this happened, is you go uh, in parentheses instead. I don't know why they programmed it like that. So... If you do it like this, you'll get an answer. Matha Freka. So a great use of the calculator, but again, it's only good in Matha Freka. So the answer is K. Last page. The Pentagon, use polygon. You'll find that the sum of the angles is 540. So the colon trick, add all those together. This is a trick in every algebra class. 5, 9, 13, 18x is 540. 
that makes X 30, and we want the largest angle, so you plug it back in 150. Absolute value of a graph means take all the negatives and make them positive. So you take all the low guys and flip them upside down. What we want is the negative of the absolute value. So you take what I just drew and flip it upside down. Is it K that, right? Elimination, everybody's negative. So it can't be any of these. It can only be all negatives. Why? Because absolute value is positive. So a negative of it has to be low. Okay. Um, for this one, I do the mythical. I've done this before in other classes. I don't think it's come up yet. I take $100 as a mythical price and take 10% off. So you times it by 10 and you get $90. And then the clearance is 30% off that. So I take the 90 and times it by 0.3. And that's another 27 off the price. So uh, 90 minus 27 is uh, 63. So what is the percent off? It was $100, now it's 63, so it's 37. What makes that hard is a lot of people just think they can add the 10 and the 30. But it, the percent of changes so it's 37, not uh, 40. Okay. Last one, a square has a perimeter equal to the circumference of a circle, radius two. So four pi is the circumference of the circle. So four pi is the perimeter of the square. Divide everybody by four, huh? So it would be 4 pi divided by 4, each side is pi. That'll do us. Test 3 in the books. Send it to you, to your phones.